our second video of the pediatric series, we will discuss arthrocentesis and arthrography. Arthrocentesis is a procedure using a sterile needle and syringe to drain fluid from a joint for further examination, with the goal to determine the cause of joint swelling or arthritis. On the other hand, arthrography is an injection procedure that visualizes the joints and joint spaces via ultrasound or fluoroscopy. Insertion sites can be at large, medium, and small joints. The most common indications include trauma evaluation, aspiration for a septic joint, and steroid injection. Relative contraindications include sepsis or infection of the overlying tissues, coagulopathy or an uncorrected bleeding of diathesis, and lastly, joint instability or severe periarticular osteoporosis. Needle selection is based on the size of the joint and the size of the child. Here are some suggestions for injections based on the injection site. Complications are rare, but they include short-term pain from distension of the joint, reduced range of motion, bleeding, and infection. A single kit should contain all your necessary materials. For a hip procedure, position the patient's hip in slight medial rotation. A medial approach targets the inferior head-neck junction, while a lateral one targets the lateral aspect of the femoral neck. First, identify the joint space under fluoroscopic guidance. Then, mark the location on the skin. Prep and drape the skin. Inject lidocaine. Insert the spinal needle perpendicular until bone contact. Remove the stylet, drip the mixture to ensure no air, and then inject the mixture. Confirm the flow of contrast as it flows traversely away from the needle tip. Note that vertical flow of contrast may indicate extravasation. Hip aspirations can be done easily with ultrasound instead of fluoroscopy. For a shoulder procedure, the arm is externally rotated. Our suggested approach is to use the rotator cuff interval, which refers to the upper medial quadrant of the humeral head in the same plane as the coracoid process. First, identify the joint space under fluoroscopic guidance. Confirm the flow of contrast down and inferiorly from the needle tip, and note any extravasation. Advantages of a rotator cuff interval approach include shorter needles, transgression of fewer anatomical structures, and a more minimal risk of distorting the labrum and capsule, glenohumeral ligament, and subscapularis tendon. One alternative approach is medial to the head of the humerus. Another approach is posterior, wherein the needle is inserted inferior to the posterior lateral corner of the acromion and directed anteriorly in the direction of the coracoid process. <laughs> 